It is with joy that we welcome you to this worship service on New Year's Eve. Thank you for joining us online. It is our prayer always at First Presbyterian Church of Plymouth that each and every service would be a blessing to you. Your presence here watching today has already served as a blessing to us, for by watching online today, you have allowed our entire church staff our chancel choir, our tech team, to also have a needed and well-deserved break so that everyone in the church has the opportunity to spend time with family members over the Christmas season. Before we get going, I do want to assure you that 51 weeks of the year, we do meet in person for worship. And next Sunday on January 7th, 2024, we will indeed be meeting for in person in the sanctuary at 9.30 a.m. and in the upper room at 11.15 a.m. At both of these worship services, we will be celebrating Epiphany and we will be handing out new star words. We will also be celebrating communion together. I am truly grateful today to Robert Shervey for the generous gifting of his time and talent which allowed us to pull this video together. I am truly grateful, Robert. And I am further grateful to everyone who actually appears in the video today. And that includes Chris DuPont and Kylie Phillips. Thanks as well to our joyful ringers under the direction of Sue Scott. Reverend Ashley is here serving as our liturgist, and I'm grateful to the Chancel Choir under the direction of Jeff Swan, who are also bringing music to this service today. Of course, assisting the Chancel Choir is Sharon Smith on the piano, Sue Scott on the organ. And finally, friends, if you can stay with us to the very end of this service, I am delighted to, stay, to say that all the staff and all of our current elders and deacons have a very special New Year's message for you. We hope you'll stay to see it. So now let us prepare our hearts for worship on this last day of the year. Let us now turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you and thank you for the blessing of this new day and for the blessing of the year, which is now closing. Please help us to look back and notice your handiwork. Grant us eyes this morning that can see you. Grant us minds open to know you. Grant us hearts ready to receive you. 
Please meet us where we are today, in our joy or in our struggles, and lead us all, we pray, closer to you. This we ask in the strong name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Friends, let us now listen to the praise offered to us by the joyful ringers who will be playing Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Our first scripture reading for today is a paraphrase of Psalm 100, written by author and pastor Eugene Peterson. Let us hear God's word to us now. On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this, God is God, and God, God. He made us, we didn't make him. We're his people, his well-tendered sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home, talking praise. Thank him, worship him. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and ever. Friends, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our second scripture lesson today comes from John's Gospel. It is a reading of John chapter 1, verse 14. There it says this, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In response to God's word, I invite you now to please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful today for everything, for every blessing, every challenge, every opportunity, every experience of the past year. Help us at all times and in every situation to see you and draw near to you. May we draw near to you now. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, 2023 is almost over. If you are watching this on New Year's Eve, we literally only have hours left before we put away last year's calendar. The expected behavior for us at this time would be for us to pause and reflect on the year past and determine what improvements we could make for the year ahead. Maybe in this coming new year, we will finally work on becoming healthier, or work to carve out more family time, or work to develop a new hobby or interest. But maybe, just maybe, friends, rather than working on a new resolution, which we may or may not keep in the year ahead, maybe God is calling us to something else. Rather than looking back on the year past and determining what in our lives needs to be fixed or improved upon, let's look back at the year now ending and identify all those areas where we have noticed God at work. Let's reflect on the past, not to improve our future, but first and foremost to thank God for never leaving our side but for walking with us each and every day of the past year. If you were to ask me where I have seen or noticed God at work during the past year within our church, I would answer that I have seen God at work every single time a child or a teenager has stood up and has been willing and excited to lead our church in worship and praise I have also seen God at work in our amazing thrift shop, which in its 72 years of ministry is doing better this year than it has ever done before. And it is, is, it is as a result, increasing our mission giving substantially. I have seen God powerfully at work through our church members, serving generously through the gifting of their time and talent, and in so doing, blessing so many others. I've seen this pattern of selfless discipleship in Sue Scott, who serves this church faithfully over the past 40 years. I've seen it in Stu Dodge, who has been a blessing to our church. I've seen God at work through the members of our building and grounds team and our missions teams going into members' home to provide help through the Handyman Initiative, which really should be called the handyman ministry. I've seen God powerfully at work in the launch of our new church website. Some of us, including myself, believed it would never come to pass. And I believe God sent an angel in the form of Kathy Bernard moving us over the finish line. Friends, these are only a few of the ways that we have witnessed God at work in the past year of the life of this church. There are so many more I could say about beloved members of this church who have faced challenges in the past year head on with both grace and courage and have taught us all what faith looks like in difficult times. I encourage you now to take five minutes and consider in your own life how has God been at work in 2023, granting you strength beyond your own strength, guiding you through challenges with patience and also with peace? 
How has God shown up for you in the past year? And where do you think God might lead you in 2024? Many of you know that here in the church, throughout the seasons of both Advent and Christmas, we have focused our attention during worship on just one verse of scripture, John chapter 1, verse 14, because we believe this one verse as a single unit does an amazing job of encapsulating the whole of the gospel message. That verse says this, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. This verse has been translated by some Bible commentators to read, the word became flesh and made his home among us, or the word became flesh and took up residence among us. In our first week of studying this scripture, Ashley taught us then through the message version of the Bible that the word became flesh and moved into our neighborhood. So let me ask you again, how has God's presence in your neighborhood, in your home, made a difference in your life today? This morning, you've heard Ashley read for you that paraphrase of Psalm 100, which said, on your feet now, applaud God, bring a gift of laughter, sing yourself into his presence, know this, God is God and God, God. He made us, we did not make him, were his people, his well-tended sheep, so we enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home, talking praise, thank him, worship him. As Christians, one of the most important lessons we can learn in life is the importance of giving thanks in all circumstances. We have the rare opportunity on this last Sunday of the year to look back and to respond to God's faithful presence with praise and gratitude. I pray that our gratitude would not be limited to one day of the year or even to the year now ending, but I pray that our gratitude would be the melody that repeats over and over throughout the whole of our lives. To God be all glory, now and forever. Amen. Friends, let us pray. God of all time, as we sit at the precipice of a new year, we look back with thanksgiving for your grace woven throughout each moment, every challenge and every joy of the past 365 days. We reflect with gratitude for the moments and milestones we experienced in your presence where we sensed your providence and your provision, your sustaining love and transforming power that has brought us to where we are right now. And as we look forward to 2024, we hold on to an all-encompassing hope that we can find only in you, a kind of hope that longs for a kinder, more just and peace-filled world. And we trust that no matter what triumphs or tragedies unfold, no matter how exhilarating or mundane the day, no matter how delightful or daunting the task, that you will never abandon us. But instead, you will seek us out and will for us an abundance of joy. As we face the uncertainty of days ahead, we ask not so much for answers to the questions that perplex us, but for confidence in your never failing care of us. May we start each new morning with a dependence on the abundance of your love, the generosity of your mercy, and the unwavering promise of your compassion. And as we turn the page in another calendar year, send your spirit to guide us and mold us. Make us instruments of your grace 
and stewards of your peace. This we pray in the saving name of Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, now our chancel choir will close our service with a song of praise. Friends, go from here today, grateful for all that is past, hopeful for all that lies ahead. Trust that God goes before you and is with you always. And as you move into the year ahead, may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today and always. And now, from everyone here at FPCP, we wish you a very blessed new year. On behalf of our staff, our elders, and the deacons, we all wish you a very happy new year. Yeah.